hello and good morning grade 10 o level how are you all hope you will be safe and sound at your home welcome to online classes this is your geography lesson and in this lesson we are going to read unit number three natural resources and issue of sustainability water first of all i'll clear you about natural resources what are natural resources students natural resources are material from the earth that are used to support life and meet people's needs natural resources are material from the earth that are used to support life and meet people's needs Swiss any natural substance that humans use can be considered a natural resource oil natural gas metal stone and sand are natural resources other natural resources are air sunlight soil and water sustainability what is sustainability sustainability is the ability to exist constantly sustainability is the ability to exist constantly are you clear about natural resources and sustainability water is the most important liquid we know it is everywhere we look water is in the ground and in the air that we breathe all animals plants and humans need water to survive water has formed our earth since its beginning it also prevent the earth from becoming too hot or too cold water never disappears we use the same water over and over again water water as a renewable energy water is an essential resource of our life water is an essential resource for life it runs directly off the earth in the form of lakes sea rivers and streams it falls from the atmosphere in the form of snow rain and hail it is returned to the atmosphere in the form of vapors by transpiration from plants and evaporation from the land the water vapors cool down and become water droplets the process of condensation therefore water is renewable as it comes from the atmosphere runs through the land absorbed absorbed by plants then returned to the atmosphere and again discharge from the atmosphere this cycle is known as the hydrological cycle hydrological cycle the more rivers we have the better it is for our country rivers can provide rainfall when the sea water evaporates they form water vapor and it results in formation of clouds which in turn precipitate which can also increase the water levels in dams the indus system the indus is the most important supplier of water resources to the punjab and sindh plains it forms the backbone of agriculture and food production in pakistan Students, what is a system? The Indus River system. Its Indus uh, and tributaries are 
3180 kilometers long. During the monsoon season, it discharges the most. Around 20 million hectares of cultivated land that accumulated to 60% of the land of Pakistan is irrigated by the Indus River and its tributaries. Its basin includes highly populous areas of Pakistan including Rawalpindi, Lahore, Jhelum and Gujarat. They accumulate to a population of 50 million. The western tributaries of Khorram, Tochi, Sawat, Kabul and Gumal have the most water in the summer season. None of its rivers flow into the Arabian Sea. For irrigation purposes, canals are taken out of the rivers as none of its rivers are absorbed by the plains. Students, uh, you are supposed to open page number 50 from your book and uh, read uh, page number 50 and 51 with me so that you may be able to understand more about natural resources. Resources are defined as a means of meeting a need, particularly an economic or social need of the people. The term usually refers to natural resources like land, water, air. Natural resources are largely unchanged materials of the land that are valuable to people and used in a variety of ways. So, we can say uh, that uh, natural resources are here uh, to help uh, the human beings uh, to meet their uh, needs and necessity, necessities. Natural resources can be described as renewable, renewable capable of being used repeatedly or non-renewable, non-renewable that cannot be renewed. Figure 3.1 classifies the type of natural resources. As you can see from uh, the figure, there are two types of resources, non-renewable and renewable. In non-renewable, we can uh, uh, see fossil fuels, remains of animals or plants, minerals, metallic and non-metallic. And in renewable, Continuous water, wind waves, sunlight, sustainable, e.g. vegetation, soil, landscape. Renewable resources can be recycled or re reused, provided they are managed uh, with care, they will not run out. Renewable can be continuous so that they can be used over and over again, e.g. water, sunlight, wind power, tidal power, geothermal power. Two, sustainable, uh, e.g. vegetation, fish, wildlife, soils. Their value may be reduced over time. For example, if forests are cut down and not replaced or soil is exhausted, the result may be harmful. Non-renewable natural resources occur in limited quantity and if their use continues, they will run out like fossil fuels and minerals. Apart from natural resources, the term resources can include human resources such as labor and skills, machinery and financial capital in this uh, unit. Water will be discussed as a vital resource. Hydrological cycle. Water is a natural resource. The water that reaches the ground from the atmosphere falls in various ways such as rain, snow or hail. 
all these are included in the term precipitation what is precipitation it is a form of water from the atmosphere it is a term in meteorology and includes rain snow frost and hail etc these form by condensation from atmospheric water vapor atmospheric water vapor and fall under gravity some of the water runs directly off the earth's surface as rivers and streams draining into lakes and sea the rest of it is either utilized by plants or soaks into the ground soaks or soak means to leave it in liquid for a period of time to clean or soften it water is returned to the atmosphere as water vapor through evaporation from surface water and by transpiration from plants evaporation evaporation is the process of turning from liquid into vapor and trans uh, transpiration means the process of losing water through the surface or skin of a body or a plant rising into the atmosphere the water vapor cools to form water droplets and this system is called condensation this cycle is called the hydrological cycle as shown in figure 3.2 hydrological uh, cycle is the water cycle known as the hydrolog uh, hydro hydrological uh, cycle the hydrological cycle describes the continuous movement of water on above and below the surface of the earth students the diagram illustrates a cycle of transfer of water from the liquid to vapor state and vice versa vice versa the other way around but water may be held for short periods in vegetation and for much longer periods in ice and snow or as ground water in the rocks themselves in pakistan the most effective sources of water are the rivers especially the river indus and its tributaries in pakistan the most effective sources of water are the rivers especially the river indus and its tributaries as discussed in unit 2 rainfall is scanty scanty small or insufficient in quantity or amount and its usefulness to farmers is limited ground water can be utilized only in those areas where the water table is high as water from the rivers is available all around the year they constitute the most important source of water supply importance of rivers to pakistan without rivers pakistan would be a barren land barren of land too poor to produce much or any vegetation the value of rivers of pakistan is explained in figure 3.3 there are two river systems in pakistan one the indus system two rivers of balochistan the indus system the indus is the largest river of pakistan it is watered by the glaciers of the karakoram and hindukush crossing the himalayas through a very deep gorge it turns to the southwest and enters pakistan the indus enters the southeast of baltistan from tibet and kashmir and flows northwest in a series of deep 
gorges between the Karakoram and Himalayan ranges. Soon after entering the Gilgit district, it turns south between the Hindu Kush and the Himalayas and then west and later southwest, still in very deep gorges. After leaving the mountainous region at Kalabagh, the river enters the plains of Punjab and Sindh. Finally, the Indus flows into the Arabian Sea. The Indus Basin, Basin container that holds water. The Indus Basin covers an area of about 1 million square kilometers and more than 150 million people live in this basin defined by the 3180 kilometer long Indus and its five tributaries its five tributaries the system irrigates about 60% of pakistan's 20 million hectares of cultiv cultivable land uh, so students this is your lesson for today you have to read page number 50 and 51 again and understand and learn properly hydrological cycle and the Indus system. Thank you uh, for listening. Take care. Allah Hafiz.